Okay, come here, guys, let's start. Right? So I want to give you an overflow of what you're learning. Huh? This is your chapter 8, which is a chapter called Sorts. Alright? So the big thing you need to know is this number one. Huh? For sort, basically, you have two big family. I just show you what happened first, then we learn one by one. Huh? First of all, all of you must know how to make the salt. You all must know how to prepare or how to make the salt. That's the first thing. Alright? Under making the salt, you will learn something about solubility, which we will learn today. You will learn three different methods to make the salt. Okay? Today, you will only learn one method or maximum two. Okay? Alright, after that, after you learn how to make the salt, you learn how to test the salt. Alright, you have a sword. If you don't know who it is, you have to know how to do a test. So under the testing of the sword, you can test it in terms of color. You can test it in terms of heating. You're going to heat the swords. Number three, you go to test the ion. We call it N ion and cat ion test. So that's it. Okay? So this is a very quick summary of what you're going to learn. Okay? We expect to spend three or maximum four lessons in this chapter, subject to your progress, okay? So first thing today, you will learn, number one, definition of salt, okay? The first thing, everyone, let's look at what is definitions of salts. Listen carefully, yeah? All right, the salt in chemistry has nothing to do with the salt that we were eating, all right? I repeat, salt in chemistry has no direct relationship with the salt that we are eating, okay? The salt that we are eating, we call it table salt in chemistry called sodium chloride. It's okay. But in chemistry, salt only not only subject to sodium chloride, there are a lot more. So what is salt in chemistry? Salt in chemistry is salt is actually ionic compound. Salt is an ionic compound. A quick recap, guys. What is ionic compound? Something made by more metal and Non-metal pair. If you remember, salt is ionic compound. Ionic compound means make anything of metal and non-metal. Salt is an ionic compound that you form when acid. All right. Repl uh, when the sorry, when the H plus ion in the acid, all the acid or H plus ion, when the H plus ion go to replace. You change the H plus ion, you change with metals. Okay, you can change with metal ion or another guy, you can change with ammonium ion. Then you get a salt. This definition, if you can remember, fantastic. If you cannot forget about it, it's okay. Yeah? I never emphasize so much on memorizing, so it's okay. Yeah? So salt is a, it's an ionic compound. You form when H plus ion in acid or acid or H plus. You change the H plus of the acid, become a metal or ammonium. Alright? Uh, or ammonium ion, sorry. Okay, then you get a salt. Okay, I give you three simple examples, guys. The, the simplest and the most famous acid called hydrochloric acid. Yet you know hydrochloric acid got H plus and Cl minus. You change the H plus ion, let's say with a metal ion. Go for it. Let's say the metal called potassium metal. So your final product, potassium chloride, is a salt. Is okay? Alright, why is Posa? Today you give me a nitric acid. I know nitric acid got H plus and NO3 minus. I change the H plus of the acid. I change it with another metal, let's say sodium metal. So I get something called sodium nitrate. That is a salt. Okay? Not to say this guy must be a metal. It also can be ammonium. Example, this is hydrochloric acid, which is H plus and Cl minus. If you change the H plus with ammonium, ammonium is NH4 positive one. So you get ammonium chloride, which is a salt. Get it? So what is salt? Salt is the chemical compound that you form. When you have acid, you take the H plus of the acid out, change the H plus with a metal or ammonium. That is called a salt. Is it okay? That's why, why I teach you chapter 7 previously. Because all most of the salts is made by acid. Most, not to say all, most of the salt made by acid. So you all must go on. This is part one. Is okay? Alright. So now, we will go on further. Today we will learn two things. Huh? We will focus on these two. This thing we're not going to touch by today. Huh? So for today, the first thing you all must know is solubility. This is the most important thing in this entire chapter. If you not even know solubility, you can't even start. Huh? 
So let's do it, okay? So the first thing, you, that, that one of the objectives at the end of today's lesson is that you all must know solubility of the salt. Solubility of the salt means that you must know your salt dissolved in water or not. That's called solubility, okay? Eh? So please listen carefully, then we will do a lot of exercises together, okay? There are four simple rules that you need to know if you want to play with solubility of salts. There's four. Rule number one, no spa is all soluble. No spa is all soluble. The word no here stands for nitrate, okay? The word spa here, S, stands for sodium. The word P stands for potassium. Okay, the A is a bit trickier. A lot of people thought A is aluminium. No, it's not. A is ammonium. Okay, guys, what is ammonium? Anything or NH4 is called ammonium. Huh? NH3 is called ammonium. Get it? Huh? Please be careful with ammonia and ammonia. So, anything that got nitrate, sodium, potassium, or ammonium confirmed will be soluble. Example, you see. Anything got nitrate, you know matter the nitrate is a zinc nitrate, sodium nitrate, aluminium nitrate, iron 3 nitrate, silver nitrate. You don't care, anything got nitrate confirm soluble. It's okay? Same thing, anything got sodium. So when you have sodium, you don't care they write sodium chloride. You don't care they write sodium bromide. You don't care they write sodium oxide. You don't care they write sodium hydroxide. Anything got sodium confirm soluble. It's okay? Get it? So anything that got one of these four guys confirm soluble. You no need to have all four of them, you know. You just need to have one of them. It's okay? Get it? Any salts that have one of these substance will be soluble. That's rule number one, eh? Later, we'll do a lot of exercises. No worry, we're going to do a lot of good exercises. Huh? Okay, rule number two. Okay, so for rule number two, you have to know something called Su Ba Ka is actually insoluble. What it means by Su Ba Ka? Su here stands for sulfate. Su stands for sulfate. Uh, anything got SO4, sulfate. Uh. Alright. Ba stands for barium, a new substance that you seldom heard in your form for. Ka stands for calcium. Okay, the word P have to be careful. P is a short form for PB. PB, if you learn in BM, they call plumber. If you learn in English, we call lead. Understand? Alright. So, Barium sulfate, calcium sulfate, lead sulfate, all of them insoluble. Sir, what about copper sulfate? Not here. Sir, what about zinc sulfate? Not here. Any other sulfate not here? Soluble. Clear? Only these three sulfate are insoluble. Get it? Any other sulfate that you don't saw here will be insoluble. That will be soluble. Understand? Some of the school will teach you to memorize in this. PBC. PBC, some school they call it Persatuan. B is Bahasa. C is China. Persatuan Bahasa China. P, plumber or lab. B, barium. C is calcium. Clear? Alright, you can use this, you can use any method also, can. But later I'll tell you why me personally I don't like this method. I'll tell you why. Clear? I'll tell you why I don't like this later. Okay, yeah? one more. One. Okay, rule number three. Rule number three is called Copacma. Copacma is insoluble. Again, who is Copacma, guys? Co stands for chloride. Co stands for chloride. Not only chloride, inclusive the siblings of chloride. Guys, the question is, who are those siblings of chloride? Chloride, if you check your binary table, is belong to group 17. So group 17, apart from chloride, you still have the brother called bromide. Apart from that, you still have another younger brother called iodide. Understand? Everything from group 17, okay? 
chloride bromide have that coal is chloride huh? so who P is plumbum or we call lead lead chloride AG is called silver MER is called mercury which is not in our syllabus so lead chloride silver chloride mercury chloride they are not soluble clear all other chloride not listed here soluble understand example zinc chloride not in the list soluble okay all right sodium chloride not in the list soluble okay only these three chloride are insoluble only these three sulfate are insoluble is it okay you have to be careful with that huh? all right again some of the school will ask you all to memorize in this way again nothing wrong it's just that i tell you some school ask you to memorize p a h P, they call it persatuan. Another persatuan. A is agama. H is Hindu. Persatuan agama Hindu. Alright. P stands for black. A stands for silver. H is HG. Stands for mercury. Understand? No problem. Depends on you. Depends whether you want to memorize in terms of persatuan or you want to memorize in this way. I will tell you my own reasoning why I don't like to memorize persatuan. Okay. So if I memorize persatuan, it's good, better than nothing. So I know there are two persatuan. I know there's a PBC, I know there's a PH. I know the two persatuan. But the problem is that if I go to remember persatuan, I don't know which persatuan used for sulfate and which persatuan used for chloride. Understand? I might confuse sometimes. But if I remember this one, I won't forget because I know Su, this is for sulfate. I know already. When I know Co, I know this guy is for chloride. Understand? So my personal preferences, I don't use persatuan because although these two persatuan might help me to memorize, but I don't know these two persatuan who belongs to the sulfate, who belongs to the chloride. Understand? That's my own, that's my personal concern. But like what I say, if you use to memorize all these persatuan and do you are doing very well with that, just stick with it. Here, yeah? okay? Or if you have any other method you learn in your school that you can memorize, it's not I'm not covered here. If you have any other method you learned before which works for you, you stick back with that. Clear? Always stick back with the method that works for you. Understand? Alright? Don't have a wrong concept. I teach you, you must follow my one. No such thing. You get an idea? Okay, oh, yeah? it's just an option. I just suggest that this is a method that I use. If you think helpful, you use it. If you think you, you understand your original method method, stick with it. Clear? Okay, last one, eh? One, two, three. Three rules already, isn't it? Come on, can we do the last one? Rule number four. Huh? Then I'll let you, I'll, we will do some exercises after this. Huh? Rule number four. All the coal, C O H, is insoluble. Guys, what is the big question? Who is coal? Huh? Coal are all the substance that react with acid. You saw all these guys before. For seriously, you see all of them before. The C, the C that react with acid is called carbonic. The O, the O who react with acid is called oxide. The H who react with acid is called hydroxide. Okay, because if you remember acid plus carbonic, salt water, carbon dioxide. Okay, oxide and hydroxide called bases. Acid plus base, salt and water. Is it okay? Get it? So all the carbonic, all the oxide, all the hydroxide, all of them are insoluble. Okay? Unless, unless the carbonic got sodium. Unless got potassium, got ammonium, then different story. Is it okay? Get it? Like zinc carbonate, insoluble. Aluminum carbonate, insoluble. Sodium carbonate, eh? Hey, got sodium. Soluble. Is it okay? Here, we still follow back the rules of sodium. You get the picture? Alright? So these are the four rules, huh? Okay? That's why I say a lot of people even at here they already blur. Get the idea? You need time. Again, guys, one of the simplest and no-brainer way to help you memorize is you take a piece of paper and copy this few times. Understand? So you think, just take a piece of paper, copy this day in the day out, you copy once in a day, you do it for one or two weeks, it will help you all so much to memorize. Understand? Because seriously, I'll be very frank with you. If you can't even know solubility table, you are not going to able to continue. Clear? Okay? Because if you don't even know solubility, you are, you are totally going to fail this chapter for sure. Get it? You must know solubility. That's the first thing in this entire chapter. Is it okay for you? Alright? So this is our part one. Alright? Part one, you all learn about definitions of salt. What is the meaning or what is the definition of salt? Part two, you go to learn whether which salt is soluble in water and which salt doesn't. Okay? 
So this is the part one for today. Alright, so this is part one. So let's move on to part two. So part two, now we will focus on much more technical things already. Three methods to make sorts. Student problem, same thing. Don't know when and which method to use. That's the problem. That's why guys, as a chemistry student, you must know how to think in a structure way. Just like what I taught you all previously. When I get a question, when I, I must know is electrolysis or voltage. So understand, because they're so different. Okay? So a quick recap here guys, if you remember how you know is electrolysis or voltage. Style. Check material. If the electrode made by two same material, both carbon, both copper, both platinum, both silver, that is electrolysis. If your electrode made by two different pieces of metal, that is voltage cell. Understand? That's something we learned before. That's why you all must know the structure way to thinking. Oh, I got the electrochemistry. Oh, I have to know this electrolysis or voltage cell, then I do accordingly. Same thing, today the question asked me to make or prepare a sword. I repeat, question want me to make or preparing a sword. So I need to know which are the best methods to do so because there is three methods. It's okay? So now I'm going to teach you a flow chart first. Just learn a flow chart and we do a few sound tests together. It's okay? We'll do about five to six sound tests together. Then only we move on uh, to the technical portion. So now the next thing you all have to learn is called there are total three methods. There are total three methods for you all to make the sorts. Uh. There are total three methods. Not one, not two, not four. It's three. Okay, only three. There are three methods for you to make the sorts. So what you should do? Okay. Whenever the question asks you to make a sort, please refer to this flow chart. Okay. Whenever, okay, we want to okay, make a sort, we all must be able to choose the right methods. If, you, if, if let's say you use the wrong method, no matter how lengthy is your answer, it's useless. Example, okay, this is an essay question. They asked me to make a sort, this sort called W, okay? So, it's, a, it's an essay question, it's total 10 mark, for example. By right, to make a sort, you should use, if you know the method you should use, is called method A. But, you think the otherwise, you go to use method B, and you are damn pro, you are very good with method B. You write your whole page, the full paper, all are paper B, done nicely. But at the end of the day, you're entitled to get zero. Understand? Because you did all the method B correctly, but they want method A. You get the idea? So your method must be correct because if you use the wrong method, there's no use. Clear? So you all must refer to this flow chart. Okay? Always refer to this flow chart. This flow chart are not given to you. You must, you need to know. Okay? Alright, again, if you're having a problem to memorize, take a piece of paper, copy. Okay, whenever you want to make a sort, ask yourself two questions. First question, always ask yourself. Is the salt that you want to make is soluble or not? The first question always ask yourself Is the salt that I want to make is soluble or not? There are two answers There's no and there is yes Okay? Because it must be insoluble or soluble right? If your salt is insoluble The method you use is called double decomposition I'll teach you in detail later You call it double decomposition method Okay, you can call it double decomposition method. Double decomposition method, some of the book also call it as precipitation method. Okay, precipitation method. Because you guys must know a word precipitate. Precipitate means a very, very small, fine solids. That's called precipitate. Clear? Right? So whenever you want to make an insoluble salt, the method you need to use, the name is called double decomposition. Okay? Or you also can call precipitation. You have to say clear? Alright. Because sometimes some of the chemicals got two name one. For example, like you all learned before, huh? when the wall's forces also can call intermolecular force. Clear? You have to be very careful. Huh? Okay, second one guys. Is the salt, if, if let's say the salt you want to make is soluble, you have to ask yourself another additional question, which is, 
Does the sword god spar or not? Is the sword god the spar you wanted or not? Guys, revise. Spar S stands for sodium. The P stands for potassium. A is not aluminium. A is ammonium. Okay? A lot of people always get wrong with the A. Here, as a lot of people know it's sodium, P a lot of people know it's potassium, but many people thought that A is aluminium. Get it? No, it's ammonium. Huh? So you have to ask yourself, is the salt got spa or not? Okay, same thing, you have two possible answers, guys. Yes or no? If the salt got, if the salt you have spa, the method you use is called titration method. You call it titration method. If the salt do not have spa, if the salt do not have spa, you call it an acid reaction method that you learned before. Okay? Acid reaction also called neutralization. That's it. So there are total three different methods that you can use. Clear? So your job for now is you shouldn't worry about them. For now, you just need to make sure that for whatever salt I gave you, you need to know what method to, to prepare. Understand? That's good enough. That's good enough for now. Clear? Alright, you must know your direction. You get a picture? Okay, I'll give you two simple questions and I'll give you six questions for self-test. Is it okay? Come, let's do one. Okay, I'll give, I'll, I'll, I'll give you two simple demonstration. Let's do two simple demonstration. Then I'll let you all do some self-test. Look at here. So here, I'm going to give you a simple self-test that you, you guys can try on yourself. Okay, can try, try about it. Okay. So this self test, I'll give you this. This is the sorts that I wanted to make or prepare, and this is the method. All right. The first two I will do with you. The last six you do on your own. All right. So total got eight lah, three, four, five, six. Seven and eight. Then total eight stops. I will write on the whiteboard here. Okay. So we go a bit random, huh? Okay. So the first sort I call it zinc chloride. It just it just write the list first. We do together. The second sort I call it barium sulfate. The third sort I call it sodium uh, nitrate. So I have another salt I call magnesium nitrate. I have a salt called aluminium carbonate. Okay. So I have another salt called potassium. <coughs> Potassium chloride. I have another salt called mm, magnesium see, iron to sulfate. The last one, I have something called calcium iodide. Okay, so now this is the partition. I will demonstrate the first two with you using what we learned today. And the last six, I give you five minutes to do is okay? Alright? Okay, guys, first of all, zinc chloride. First question to ask yourself is it soluble? Think about chloride, think copacma. Copacma got lead chloride, silver chloride, and mercury chloride. Okay? Zinc is not in the list. Therefore, zinc is soluble. Alright? Go that. Do you have spa, sodium? No, I don't have. Uh, potassium? No, I don't have. Ammonium? I don't have. Clear? I should use acid reaction or called neutralization. Understand? So the method I should use is called neutralization, also called acid reaction. You will know why I call acid reaction in the next lesson. I'll tell you why. All right, all good. Next one, second question. Barium sulfate. Think about sulfate, think subaka. So in Subaka, I saw the bar, barium sulfate. So it is insoluble. 
So I can might make a final verdict. If insoluble come here, no need to go for second question already, is okay? So the method I suppose to you is called double decomposition. Okay? So guys, I write short form, is okay? I just write I write DD, yeah. Uh, double decomposition. I just write short form. Here, yeah? in exam, you're not allowed to do that, you must spell the whole name. Uh, double decomposition, also known as precipitation. Is okay? Alright. Guys, for the rest of you, can you try to do question 3 to 8? Alright? Just try, alright? Follow this flow chart, that's it. Okay? Every time, whenever you want to make a salt, ask yourself two questions. Question number one, is the salt I want to make it soluble or not? Okay? Is the salt got spa or not? Alright? From there, choose the right method. You get the picture? Come. Just try on it. Just try. Alright guys, hope all is good. Right? Let's try to do this question together. Yeah? Alright. Quick one. Sodium nitrate, <coughs> no matter you look upon sodium or nitrate, confirm they are soluble. Because no star or soluble. Anything or nitrate or anything of sodium will be soluble. This guy got both, absolutely it will be soluble. Alright. Second question, do you have star? Yes, I have S. I have the sodium. So if you are soluble and sodium, the method you're supposed to use is called hydration. It's okay. Next one, magnesium nitrate. Same thing. Yes. Magnesium nitrate has nitrate. Anything has nitrate will be soluble. So do you have spark? No sodium, no potassium, no ammonium. So you don't have spark. Soluble but no spark. Neutralization. Also known as acid reaction. Is it okay? Next one, aluminium carbonate. Everything that got carbonate are insoluble. Okay, all carbonate are insoluble. So when you come to insoluble, find the verdict double decomposition, or we call precipitation. Okay, all good. Eh? All right, three more to go. Potassium chloride. So you can either look at on the chloride side of potassium also can. Potassium is the spark. So anything got sodium, potassium, ammonium, confirmed soluble. Alright? Then you the spar here you have P, you have the potassium. So soluble and spar, hydration. This is the method you should use. Okay? All good. Second last, iron 2 sulfate. Look at sulfate. Think about sulfate thing, subaca. So, iron is not in the list of subaca, therefore, soluble, okay? So, when you are soluble, the second question, you have no spark, you have no sodium, you have no potassium, you have no ammonium, therefore, neutralization. Last one, calcium iodide. So, look at iodide. Iodide is a sibling of chloride. Think about chloride in copacma. So, lead, silver, and mercury, these three guys will be insoluble. Alright? So, calcium iodide is not in the list of soluble, right? Soluble. So, when you are soluble, the next question, do you have spark? No sodium, no potassium, no ammonium. So, you are in, you, you don't have spark, so you should use neutralization. Is it okay? So, this is the brief idea of what you should do. Here. So this is part two, get it? Part one, understand solubility. That's the basis of everything. Now you understand why I said the part one is so important. Because if you don't even know your salt is soluble or not, I give you this thing, I give you this flow chart in the exam also useless. Clear? If I gave you this booklet, you not even can answer the first question. Because you don't even know who is soluble, who is insoluble, get it? That's why. The first and the most important thing in this entire chapter is solubility. Here, after understanding solubility, the second part we learn about choosing the right methods to make a salt. Guys, how many methods to make salt? Three. Okay? So you all must know, all right, which one to use. Here, so the next thing what we're going to do is that, okay, we will use about one hour each to cover every method. Which means I will, I will spend about one hour to teach you this method, one hour to teach you this method, one hour to teach you this method. Understand? After you learn these three methods, this chapter finish 50%. Get it? Because this chapter, two things only, man. prepare and testing. So if you know how to prepare using all three methods, you already finish 50%. Get it? Huh? Okay, come, we go a bit slower. 
Now, I want every one of you to know exactly what is precipitation method. This is very important because you will look at this method very soon again. In your Form 5, Chapter 4. Form 5, Chapter 4, you will learn something called heat of precipitation. Okay? Form 5, Chapter 4, heat of precipitation. At that time, you will see the word precipitation again. Clear? Alright? So it's actually like one stone, you hit two birds. Lah. If you know this one, it will help you in the form by chapter 4 as well. Got it? Ah? Come, let's start. Okay, so now I'll teach you every single thing you need to know about precipitation. So listen carefully. Ah. I'll tell you what is precipitation. Okay, so listen carefully. Okay, the first method that we will study, we will use about one hour for this, is this. You need to know something called double decomposition. Okay, we call it double decomposition or we also can call it as precipitation because this thing I'll remind you later precipitation coming from the word precipitate that you'll keep on seeing later from now and onward the word precipitate means you have some very very fine very small insoluble solid that's called precipitate is it okay? okay yeah okay come let's start okay first of all so today you will learn in a one hour time frame, you will learn from the head to the toe, you will learn A to the Z of double decomposition, okay? So I don't have many requests, I just hope that after one hour, alright, you fully understand what is double decomposition. Here, of course, you need to do exercise afterward, get it? But after one hour, I want you to know the idea, what is the concept first. Here, then we do together, come, let's do it here. So I will spend a lot of time to teach you concept because it's so important. Please listen to what I say. Huh? Double decomposition method is the method for us to prepare or for us to make insoluble salt. So whenever you want to make insoluble salt, the method is actually called double decomposition. Second one, I want you to know what is the idea. Look at the basic idea first. Huh? So the basic idea is this. When I say double decomposition, you need to do this. You need to take a soluble salt. You need to take a soluble salt mixed with another soluble salt. So when two soluble salt mix together, they will have a process. I call it exchange partner. They will exchange their partner. So after they exchange their partner, you will end up with an insoluble salt and you will end up with another soluble salt. This is the most important concept you must know for double decomposition. Okay, I'll give you a simple idea so that you can imagine a bit better. Then we do a little bit more example. Huh? See ya? So soluble salt means you have a liquid. So you see, initially you have a liquid. Okay, this is a liquid. I call it a soluble salt number one. Huh? This is a soluble salt. This is another cup. This is also liquid. This is another soluble salt. Okay, so you have two soluble salt you mix together. So you pour them and you mix together first. So when you mix together, these two soluble salt will change their partner. I teach you how to change later. I teach you how to change later. So after change partner, you all will see two layers. You all always see two layers. Why? One layer is the insoluble salt. Guys, when I say insoluble, it means that this guy is a solid. Normally, solid is denser. So that solid normally sink at the bottom. So the bottom here is the insoluble salt. Okay? Apart from that, after change partner, you also get a soluble salt. Soluble salt means liquids. So the liquid will float on top here. Is it okay? Alright? So this is what you need to know. So when I say double decomposition, just imagine, I take two liquids, I mix these two liquids together. After mix these two liquids, these two liquids will change their partner inside. I'll tell you how they change later. After change the partner, you will see two layers. The top layer is the liquid, which is the soluble salt. The bottom layer is a solid, which is the insoluble salt. It's okay? This particular process is called double decomposition. Get it? So you get the picture first. So later we will do some technical uh, example. This example will help you to understand much, much better. 
Okay, our target is do three examples. I do two, you do one. Eh? We try to do three examples. I will do two for you, you will do one for me, and that's it. Alright? So today I just end up with double decomposition. It's good enough for you. Huh? Too many things you cannot take it. Okay? So look at here. Everyone look at here. The first example. Listen carefully. Huh? First example, of course, you might feel a bit blur. Okay? My disclaimer. You might feel a bit blur for first example. It's okay. Hang on there. Just get some picture first. Let me do another example afterward. If after example 1 and 2, you still feel very blur, just ask me. Is okay? Yeah? So, example number 1, very important. Please stay focused and listen. Huh? So, this is what happened here. Alright, so, the question is this. The question asks us to outline the method in order to prepare a sort. This sort is called lead to sulfate. Okay, this is the question. Like this question normally asks you in essay, and we are talking about 7 to 10 marks, 7 marks, okay? Let's say this is a real question came out in STM 2006, okay? Outline the method to prepare lead to sulfate. The marks given to you is 7 marks. No worry, don't be panicked, just follow the flow, okay? So this is my simple strategy. Go back to the flow chart. Go back to the flow chart in order to decide your method first, just like what we what we learned previously. So my flow chart, the first one, let two sulfate is it soluble? Let two sulfate is here. Yeah? Let two sulfate. So think about sulfate thing subata. So the sulfate here got let let sulfate theoretically is insoluble. So when we know the let two sulfate is insoluble. I know the method we should use, double decomposition. So we only can use double decomposition method. The other method cannot because double decomposition is the method for you to make insoluble salt. Is okay? Get it? Right? Huh? So any one of you here don't understand why I use double decomposition to make lead to sulfate. Okay? Lead to sulfate is an insoluble salt, so we have to use double decomposition. So please be reminded once again, our second part just now. When I give you any salt, no matter the salt given to you in the form of a name, or the salt given to you in the form of formula, you must go to ask yourself that two question. Soluble or not, got spa or not. From there, you choose your method first. Here, okay, now we have made our choice, which is double decomposition. So I say just now, what is double decomposition? Soluble, soluble, change partner, insoluble and soluble. So we need this, huh? So we need to take a soluble salts, mixed with another soluble salts. Is that that? So they will change partner, these two soluble salts will change partner. I'll tell you how they change later. Nothing to worry at now. They will change the partner. After they change your partner, you will get the insoluble salt that you wanted and also you have another side product, a soluble salt that you don't want. I'll teach you how to do, don't worry, up one by one. Okay? Now, let's start. Okay. Question won't tell us what are the soluble salt that we need. They won't tell us. They won't be that kind. So you all must have some skills to predict it. You all must know how to predict and choose the right soluble salt to use. Huh? It's a bit technical. Example number one can be very confused, but please hang on there. Listen to what I'm trying to offer. Here? Yeah? Alright. So, why you need two soluble salt? You want to make lead to sulfate. So, one of the soluble salt will give you the lead. This soluble salt will give you lead. One of the soluble salt will give you another part, sulfate. Here? Yeah? Alright, I offer you the lead, you offer me the sulfate, that's why join together we form lead sulfate. Make sense or not? Make sense, huh? Now, please listen carefully, okay? So, who is the soluble salt that got lead? Who is the soluble salt that got lead? Okay, listen carefully. All the salt, no matter soluble or insoluble, all the salt, they have ions. Because recall back the definition, salt is an ionic compound that you form huh? when the H plus ion in the acid replaced with metal or ammonium. The definition, if you can remember, never mind. You just need to know all the salt always got ion. Ion means what? Charge. 
All right, so look at here. Salt always have two charge, plus and minus. Huh? So, let, make a guess. Let, what is the charge? PB? Two plus, right? You know what? So, I know the let is the PB two plus, which means that I already know who is the owner of the positive. Am I right? But I, so I need to make a guess who is a negative. Get it? So, I need to choose a negative ion to put here to pair it with the LEDs. Get it? Alright? So, but we have so many negative ions out there. You cannot simply, simply say, Oh, Mr. Martin, I love oxide. I put oxide here. Cannot. Why? Because you cannot so, be so hungry that simply put a negative ion because at the end of the day, you want it to be soluble. You get an idea? Alright? So, how to make sure that you can make it soluble? So, we go back to the rules we learned just now. If you all remember, no spa is all soluble. Everything got no spa compound soluble. No is nitrate, NO3 negative 1. S is sodium, Na plus. P is potassium, K plus. A is not aluminium, it's ammonium, NH4 plus. So these four ions are always soluble. So please just play with them. Is it okay? So you know you need a negative ion, which is soluble. I think my choice is clear. Just pair with nitrate. Understand? Just pair with nitrate. Will you? So you just pair with nitrate. So you already know. The first soluble salt, the first raw material you need is called lead nitrate. Understand? You get the picture? That's how you do. Okay, how you predict, how you predict the formula? Form 4, chapter 3. When you give me two ion, the charge are different. What do you do? Cross. Here, cross, right? So you do the cross method. So your soluble salt is actually who? So your soluble salt actually is this guy. Eh? So your soluble salt, I write somewhere here. Eh? Plumber nitrate or lead nitrate. This is your raw material, lead nitrate. Is it okay? Get it? Because PB2 plus and NO3 minus, when the charge is different, just do the cross method. Is it okay? You, you guys understand how I get it? Good. So I know my first raw material, which is great. So let's go for the second one. Now I'm looking for another raw material. This raw material has to be a soluble salt, and this raw material must give me sulfate. Same thing, I know all the salt must have plus and minus. And I know the salt must have sulfate, and I know sulfate is SO42 minus. Am I right? I know the sulfate must be SO42 minus. So I know the negative ion has to be sulfate, but I don't know what is the positive ion because the question don't tell. Hold on. So now, as usual, you are the one who making a decision now. So you have to make a decision to choose a positive ion to put here. Get it? But again, there are so many positive ions out there. You cannot simply, simply choose because you want to make sure it is soluble. Clear? So if you want something soluble, please don't think too much. Just go for the no spa. So you want a positive ion, please don't choose nitrate. Nitrate is a negative, understand? So you can choose sodium. You can choose potassium, you can choose ammonium, either one. Is it okay? Let's say I choose sodium. So I put sodium here. So I let the sodium pair with sulfate. Same thing, form 4, chapter 3. Sodium, the charge is Na plus. S over the charge is 2 minus. When the charge is different, do the cross. So you will get the formula called Na2SO4. Sodium sulfate. Here. So you already figured out what are the raw material you need in this question. Here. The first raw material called lead nitrate, the second raw material called sodium sulfate. Is it okay? Now let's get it done. Alright? So we know that after we have two soluble salt, they will change partner. This one quite easy, right? Nah? Change partner. So change partner, lead, change partner with sulfate. Okay? So the plus go to take this other than minus. So lead combined with sulfate, lead sulfate, PB, SO4. Okay? Then the sodium pairing with the nitrate. <coughs> so the sodium pairing with the nitrate. So you form sodium nitrate. You get the picture? Can you see at the end of the day, you already make the lead sulfate that you wanted? You get the picture? Here, please begin with this equation because it's so important because when you write a chemical equation, you know what is going, what is happening. Here. And don't forget a chemical equation always need to balance. Huh? So one left on the left, one left on the right. 
two nitrate on the left, one nitrate on the right. So you have to put a two here to balance it. When you put a two here, sodium got affected, sodium got two, which is great. Okay? Sulfate, SO4, SO4, all good. Here, for now, please make sure you know how to choose this method and how I write this equation. Is it okay? This is very, very important and it might look a bit technical at now. But trust me, this is the most important step. When you know this step, the rest is easy. You get the picture? Alright? So later I'll write a summary for you. Ah. So this is the first part. It's okay. Right? You guys can take note on this, can jot down on this if you think necessary. Then we do one more example together. Here, then only I teach you what to do next. Of course, don't expect write an equation a new seven mark. Don't expect that. Clear? We're not done yet. There is some follow-up thing we will learn later. Clear? For now, just write this equation first. Come on. Okay guys, come. Can we continue a bit and finishing this thing? Alright, like what I said just now. Don't expect this chemical equation will earn you seven marks. Understand? No way. Alright, this is an essay question. You must write a good description. Clear? Okay, now listen carefully. A lot of people's the problem in this chapter is that they always complain, so it's very hard this chapter because I need to memorize many things. Well, I can't deny that you need to memorize. But you don't, don't go, you don't need to memorize everything here. And you can memorize in a smart way. I'll teach you what it means to memorize a smart way. I want you to memorize diagram. Memorize picture. Don't memorize words or paragraph. It's hard. Come, let's look at here. And many things can be explained using my, my common word. I like it, common sense. I'll tell you what it means, common sense. Huh? Look at here. Alright. So, this is the strategy to do sorts. Huh? Everyone look at here. I give you a strategy and we finish it. Okay. So, if we want to solve the sort, the strategy is this. Number one, you all go to choose the right method. After choose the right method, I want you to choose the right material or so-called reactant. Huh? You choose the right reactant or so-called raw material. After you choose the raw material, which is what you need, you all go on with writing a good chemical equation which you also did, right? Now we have two more things to go. After writing a chemical equation, I want you to draw a diagram, draw a picture. Okay? Then after draw a diagram, then only you turn it into some words. Turn into some words description. This is the word. Okay, now I teach you. Okay, let me teach you uh, how to make it. Alright guys, you can use back the same diagram just now. Okay, how to draw the diagram guys? We have lead nitrate. We know lead nitrate is a soluble salt. Soluble salt means liquid. Guys, salt only got two states. If they are soluble, you see liquids. If they are insoluble, you saw solid. Clear? So I have a soluble salt number one called lead nitrate. So it's a liquid. So you have a liquid in the beginning, guys. Initially, you have a liquid in the beginning. Okay, draw some lines. Huh? This is a liquid. This liquid called lead nitrate. Huh? Okay, in BM they call plumbum nitrate. Huh? Okay, they call they call lead called plumbum. Huh? Okay, the second soluble salt is called sodium sulfate. So soluble salt, you drop another cup, another cup, huh? another liquids. So sodium sulfate, sodium Na two SO four. So everyone understand why you got two cup here? Because I got two soluble salt. Soluble salt means I got two liquids. Okay? So now guys, you want the two liquids to react what you do. Okay? Shh. You mix them together. So you just mix. Okay? Just mix. Normally guys, in chemistry, after you mix up, after you mix normally in chemistry, if you want to ensure that they mix perfectly, normally you do this one more action. You stir. Okay, you use a glass root or stirring root to stir it. Understand? Get it? Alright, so you mix and stir to ensure they mix perfectly. Is it okay? So after you mix and stir, you know they change partner. The picture won't show how you change partner, so we don't care. After change partner, what do you get? Insoluble and soluble. One more time, guys. Insoluble means solids. Soluble means liquids. So solid and liquid, you expect to see two layers. Understand? So you will see two layers. So this is number one. So the second diagram, you expect to see two layers like this. Remember, the bottom layer will be the solids, which is the insoluble stuff. 
So for your bottom layer will be your insoluble. Who is it? Your insoluble guy? Lead sulfate. Huh? Okay, lead sulfate subaca insoluble. So you have the insoluble lead sulfate at the bottom. On top here, you have the soluble further. So the soluble further, who is it? Refer to your equation. <coughs> sodium nitrate. So you already have sodium nitrate here. Is it okay so far? Alright? Get idea? So you already formed two layers. But guys, allow me to ask you a simple question. In this particular question, your concern, your main purpose is what? You want to make what? Lead sulfate. Here. So do you get the lead sulfate you want already? Yep. I already get the lead sulfate I wanted. But the lead sulfate come along with another side product, sodium nitrate, which I don't want. Clear? So it means that I want the plumbum sulfate or lead sulfate, you give me another one more free bonus, sodium nitrate, which I don't want the free bonus. Clear? So now I must think of the way to separate them. Clear? So in a common sense, we know insoluble means solid. Soluble means liquid. Solid and liquid normally in your lab, how you separate them? How you separate a solid and liquid in your lab normally? <coughs> no, need, no need to evaporate too, too complicated. Super simple thing. Filter. Just filter will do, okay? Huh? Solid and liquid, just filter will do the job. I'm saying, don't need to do too many things. Just filter, alright? Make sense, right? Guys, see, when you do filter, you draw a filter funnel, huh? this is a filter funnel. When you filter, you know, on top here, these are the insoluble stuff, which is lead or plumbum sulfate. At the bottom here, you know this is a soluble liquid. Who is it? Sodium nitrate. Are you with that? Can you see you already separate them? True not. Guys, the question is that why I want to separate them? I don't want the sodium nitrate, right? I only want the lead sulfate. Get it? Okay, before I go on, this is an important concept you, that you will carry along from now and onward for the next three lessons. Huh? Look at here, this is a very important concept. Huh? Okay, in SPM, all the salt that we make, huh? in SPM, all the salt that we make must fulfill three requirements. Number one, they must be a solid. You must make a solid salt. Number two, all the salt we make in SPM must be clean. Number three, all the salt we make in SPM must be dry. Is it okay? So you check yourself. You check yourself out so far. Alright? According to what you've done currently. Have you gotten the solid salt? Yep. The lead sulfate that I want is already solid. Get it? Alright? Is it clean? No. Because even after filter, they might still have some sodium nitrate sticking with the lead sulfate. You get the idea? Even after filter, you can't deny that you might still have some of the sodium nitrate liquid sticking along with the solid here. So how are you going to make it clean? The one and only way to clean is this, huh? You get something is you get a bottle of distilled water, just flush, just flush, okay? Use your distilled water, just press and flush. Let the water run through. When the water run through, it will wash and clean the solid. So now your solid become clean already. Understand? Lastly, lastly, how you dry it. Everyone listen carefully because you will keep on using it. The one and only way to dry the salts in SPM, the one and only way to dry the salt in SPM is take two pieces of filter paper. You take, not necessarily two pieces, can be two stack also can, but you take two filter paper, you will take the filter paper, you will put on the solid here. This is the solid, this is the lead sulfate solid, you put in the middle and you just perform the compression, you compress, you just press. So when you press the solid, it will actually help to dry it, understand? You are not allowed to use some funny, funny thing to dry it, understand? I saw last time got people say, put the sulfate under the fan for 4 hours. Well, common sense it works. But it's not acceptable in SPM. Here, in SPM, they only allow one method, which is compression using filter paper. Here, because sometimes a lot of people they just use some use too much of common sense. Some people write, oh, put the lead sulfate in oven for five minutes. Well, theoretically, nothing wrong. Theory wise, it's okay, but too bad the answer is not acceptable. You get the picture? There's only one way to write the salt filter paper, compress. Get the picture? So I want you to remember picture, don't memorize the words. Why? Now you see the magic. 
After you remember all the picture, you just use all these picture to write a good words. Turn all these things into a words, which I will do now with you. Come, you see huh? how I make whole thing here become words. You will see it makes sense now. Okay, then we do one more example, then we finish up. Huh? Okay, turn all these things into a word story. Okay, first one, you have a cup for lead nitrate. Okay, write this up. Huh? Fill up a beaker. Fill up a beaker with the solution called lead to nitrate solution. Fill up a cup or a beaker with lead to nitrate solution. Okay, get it? Another one cup. Okay. Fill up another beaker. Fill up another beaker with another solution, which is called here sodium <coughs> sulfate. Fill up another beaker with another solution called sodium sulfate solution. Guys, is it okay? So you already fill up both, right? What to do? As you can see here, you mix, okay? So you just mix both solutions. You have two solutions, you mix them together. After mix, you go to stir the... Guys, learn this word. Upon, upon mixing, you call the new thing called mixture. You call it mixture. After you mix, you call the whole thing called mixture. Understand? So can you see my first three things already explained the first diagram? Is it okay? Alright, now what do you see? Two layers is formed. Huh? Alright? You will see two layers are formed. Okay, so after you get two layers, but you don't need to explain the top layer is what, bottom layer is what. Don't need to, to go to the extent. Understand? After this, what happened? After form two layer, you go to filter. Hey, okay, what is the purpose of filter? I want to get the solid, right? Who is the solid? Uh? Lead sulfate. Here, all right. So you just write this. So I just filter the mixture. So why I filter the mixture? I filter the mixture because I want to obtain. I want to get the lead to sulfate okay the lead to sulfate you can use the word solid if you don't want to write the word solid you can write insoluble salt or you can use another one more word called precipitate okay you filter the mixture to get a precipitate precipitate means the insoluble salt get it so after filter you already get the insoluble salt you want is it okay okay now from the picture what else you do here you wash it, okay? You use the word wash, you can use the word flush, you can use the word rinse, all are okay. You wash, you flush, or you rinse the precipitate, or so called the lead to sulfate, you flush it with distilled water. It must be distilled water, huh? it cannot be tap water because tap water are not clean. Clear? Alright? The cleanest water in the lab is distilled water, get it? After flush, fantastic, you already get a clean salt. Ultimately, what I do, I dry it. So, you just dry the salt or dry the precipitate. How you do it? Okay, by pressing between filter papers. Okay, between filter papers. So, you use the filter papers to compress. Are you okay with that? By doing this, you get seven marks. Understand? You get a picture? Not easy, but not too hard. Clear. That's why don't memorize this seven step. It's hard if you memorize this, guys. Memorize picture. If you have this picture in your mind, all these seven steps you can create yourself. Clear. That's why don't memorize words because words are hard to memorize. If you can memorize picture, you can imagine what is happening. It's much easier for you to come up with an answer. Are you doing that? And at the at the end of the day, listen to my advice. Whenever they ask you to make a sword, whenever they ask you to make a sword, no matter what method you choose to be, no matter you use double decomposition, you use neutralization, or you use titration, whenever you want to make a sword, although the question never mentioned, please, please, and please write the equation. This equation down in. Okay, a lot of people say, sir, in marking since sometimes I saw the equation they wrote on the first point, sometimes they wrote on the last point. You don't care. First or last doesn't matter. The sequence never mind. As long as the equation should, should be there. Understand? Why? When you write this chemical equation, you somehow prove to the examiner that you know what is going on. <laughs> Clear? So at here, please don't forget, no space already. You just dump in your chemical equation. 
this entire equation, blah, 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 this one, just start in here. Is it okay? By doing this, you should be able to get a good marks here. You got a picture? Not very hard, but it's all about how you do in a very systematic manner. Are you feeling that? Now, let's put all the puzzle together again. We will do one last example to see whether you understand or not. What's the puzzle? Number one, whenever we want to make a sort, first of all, you must choose the method. How you choose the method? The flow, the chart. Ask yourself the two questions. Is it soluble? Do you have spark? From there, choose the method out of the tree. Get it? After choosing the method, you must choose the chemical or raw material. For double decomposition, what is the raw material? Soluble salt plus soluble salt. Change partner, insoluble and soluble. Clear? So your raw material is two soluble salt. You use the way I taught you just now to figure out who are the two soluble salt. The first soluble salt must give you the lead. The second soluble salt gives you the sulfate. Clear? After you found out your raw material, you write a good equation, which is somewhere here. After you write the equation, you know exactly who is reacting. Then you come to do a simple sketching of a diagram like this. After you have all this picture, you change all this picture in a written story. You get a picture? This is what you should do. Alright, again guys, it's not easy, but it's not hard either. It's not hard either. You just need to make sure you can do it in a systematic manner. Here, and again, you have to practice. Here, no way, you just look at the two examples I cover on the whiteboard here, without doing anything yourself, you will understand. No way. Here, you have to really, really put in effort. Trust me, if you fully understand the two examples here, you take initiative, go to find two or three similar questions like this, you do yourself, <coughs> it's enough for you already. Clear? Alright, that's it. So far, all okay? You understand what's happening here? We do one more, it's okay. We do one more together, huh? one more, alright? So now, another one more example, let's do it. I, I just modify from here. Example number two, this is the last example we learned for today's lesson. Huh? Example number two, we all need to outline a method to make a guy. This guy, let's say we call it as this. Okay, I call this guy called magnesium carbonate. All right, we want to make a salt called magnesium carbonate. All right, as usual, I want you to follow all my strategy again. Huh? Let's do the strategy. So if you want to make a salt, First and foremost, you can refer to the flow chart as shown on the whiteboard here. You must choose the method. To choose the method, ask yourself, magnesium carbonate soluble or not? Insoluble, because all carbonate are insoluble. Rule number four just now, okay? Rule number four. All carbonate are insoluble. So you know magnesium carbonate is insoluble. So when you wanted to make an insoluble salt, there's only one method applicable. So you all have to use double decomposition. I call it DD la. Double decomposition. Are you here with that? Okay, now, I already know the salt I want to make is insoluble salt. And I already know the method I supposed to use is double decomposition. Now, let's get it done. So the next thing is that we all have to choose the right chemical or raw material. What is the raw material for double decomposition? Guys, what is the important concept we learned just now? Double decomposition is soluble salt plus another soluble salt. When two soluble salt mix together, they will exchange partner. So when two soluble salt go and exchange the partner, you are getting the insoluble salt that you wanted and also another side product, soluble salt that you don't want. Is it okay? For me, this is the most important steps. Let's do it. So now, why you need two soluble salt? The first soluble salt must give me magnesium. The second soluble salt has to give me carbonate. Alright, one give me magnesium, one give me carbonate, join together magnesium carbonate. Understand? So let's go and make the gas again. So I know all the salt, no matter soluble or not, I have plus and minus. So the plus I know is magnesium because magnesium is Mg2 plus. So when I know the plus is magnesium, same thing, I need to choose a negative ion to attach with it. 
I have so many negative ions out there. Again, I can't simply choose because it need to be soluble. The best soluble negative ion we learned moment ago is nitrate, NO3 negative. Am I right? So you pair it with NO3 negative. So you know the first raw material is called magnesium nitrate. So do the cross method. The two come to here, the one come to here. Mg1, NO3 two. So your first raw material is magnesium nitrate. So I write it out. So this is the one, huh? Mg, NO3 two. Everyone understand why I choose this guy? Okay, huh? Right, next one. I need another one more raw material. This raw material is a soluble salt and consists carbonate. And I know salt have plus and minus. Carbonate, I know is negative. It's CO3, two minus. Understand? So I already know who is the negative fella. So I need to find a positive ion to put here. The positive ion must be soluble one. The best soluble positive ion is spa. Sodium, potassium, or ammonium. Let's say I use potassium here. K plus. Understand? Same thing. You can see the charge is different. Do the cross method. One come here, two come here. K two CO three. So you have K two CO three. Get it? So now you guys already found out the two raw material you needed. One is magnesium nitrate. One is potassium sulfate. You already found the right raw material. Is it okay? Now the next thing is that you must complete the equation. To complete the equation. You need to let them change partner. So magnesium will go to rock the another partner called carbonate. You get magnesium carbonate, which is what you want to do. Clear? And another side product, the potassium will attach with nitrate. You will get potassium nitrate. Please be reminded all your chemical equations must be balanced. So I put a tool here to keep it balanced. Is it okay? So now, you already come up with a good chemical equation. So after you come up with a good chemical equation, you can continue with drawing a good picture. So your picture, okay? So you have two soluble salt means that you have two liquids. The first liquid called magnesium nitrate, so change it. So this guy become magnesium nitrate. The second liquid is called potassium carbonate, change it. So you have potassium carbonate. Huh? So you have two liquids because they are two soluble salt. So you mix and stir as usual. After mix and stir, remember double decomposition will change partner. When you change partner, you get insoluble and soluble. You will get a solid and a liquid. So as usual, you form two layers. Understand? So you must be careful who is soluble, who is insoluble. So we know the insoluble one is magnesium carbonate. So the insoluble will be at the bottom. So the bottom is magnesium carbonate. The top one is the soluble, potassium nitrate. Are you with me? So you already formed two layers. Again, your main constant is only the magnesium carbonate. You want the solid only, right? So you have solid and liquid mixture. So it's time for you to filter off. Just filter, the, bot the top should be the solid you wanted, which is magnesium carbonate. The bottom is something that you don't want, which is the potassium nitrate. So after filter, you already get the salt you want. Allow me to remind you for last time for today. All the salt we make in SPM must be clean, dry and solid. You already have the solid salt because it is insoluble salt. Insoluble salt must be solid. You already have the solid salt, but it's not clean yet. Because your magnesium carbonate might still sticking with some potassium nitrate on here. Although you filter, some potassium nitrate come here, but some potassium nitrate is just sticking. So use the distilled water to flush or rinse. Okay, let the water run through. So now your magnesium carbonate will be very clean. Okay? In the end, all the salt must be dry. There's only way, the only one way to dry the salt is compressed. So put the salt that you want to dry, which is magnesium carbonate, put the magnesium carbonate in between the filter papers and then you just compress it. Understand? And your job is done. It's okay? So here, you can use back the same template, just now just change two words only. The first word you have to change is this. Your solution, instead of being the lead nitrate, now you become magnesium nitrate. The second one is that, here you use potassium carbonate. You change this one, become potassium carbonate. 
Okay. The rest all can be the same. Same, 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 same. Only here different. Filter to make sure to get the lead two sulfate. In this case, the solid is not lead two sulfate. In this case, the solid is magnesium carbonate. Okay. So you write like this and you earn your full mark. Is it okay? Okay, good questions. Do we have to write the volume of the solution? If you know what is the volume, you write. If you don't know, you don't write. Okay? So what is the volume? In most of the text, they write this down, guys. Okay. In some of the textbook or some of the lessons, so they'll show you the volume. If you know the volume, you should write. Not only the volume and also the concentration. If you know, you should write. If you don't know, you don't need. Okay, I teach you a simple way. If you want to write, I teach you. You just make a wild guess depends on the container. In chemistry, you have two containers. In general, we call big and small. Okay, big containers are like beaker. Conical flask, those are big container. Small container is test tube. So when you have a big container like this case, which is a, a what we call a beaker, your volume, you can play around 50 to 200. Understand? Between 50 to 200. Let's say I make a simple guess. Lah. Okay, fill out a beaker with, I add the volume here. I add 100 cm cube. Okay? What about the concentration? Concentration, you can use any concentration you want, starting from 0 0.01 all the way to 1.0. If you want to be hassle-free, just use 1.0. More per dm cube. Is it okay? But this is purely optional. Understand? You get the idea? Right? In SPM, even you don't write this, you are fine actually. Right? So if you know about the volume and concentration, then you write. If you don't know, it's okay. Clear? Get it? It's a good question. Okay? So, can you realize that double decomposition is not very hard? Get the picture? It's all about how you do it in a strategic manner. If you ask me, yeah, guys, what is the most important thing here? It's actually how you choose the right chemical. For me, the most important step is choosing the chemical and writing the equation. These two are the most important things. So many people, they fail to write the equations. Why? Because they don't memorize. Get it? If you memorize, it's hard because like what I say, if you memorize lead sulfate in your textbook, but exam all in sudden change of magnesium carbonate, you cannot be flexible enough to change. Get it? But if you understand the reason behind, you know exactly why we're doing this and that, it will be much easier for you. Is it okay? This chapter is quite tough, but it's not as hard as you thought. Clear? You just need to have the very structured way and a very good strategy. Is it okay? So any questions you want to ask before we end up with today's lesson? Okay? And guys, the best way to examine whether you are good enough or not is go back and try some questions. Okay? Go back and try some questions. Normally they ask this in essay. 7 to 10 marks is quite common. Is it okay? So when you get a question, please ask yourself, oh, the salts they asked us to make, is it soluble or not? Is it got spa? From there, choose the right methods. So, like for example, for today, we only learn double decomposition. So when I know the method I should use is called double decomposition, I think what I must know about double decomposition, soluble, soluble, change partner, insoluble, soluble. So I need to figure out the two soluble salt. understand? So one, I need two soluble salt. One soluble salt give me the head that I wanted. One soluble salt give me the tail. Who is the head? Magnesium carbonate, the head is magnesium. The tail is carbonate. Clear? Uh, so, you must know magnesium is a positive ion to make it soluble pair with a nitrate. Get it? Carbonate is a negative ion to make it soluble pair with spa. Sodium, potassium or ammonium. Clear? After that, accomplish this equation and change the partner. Once you accomplish this equation, please go and draw a good diagram. Because when you draw a good diagram, you somehow able to imagine what is going on here. And when you know what is going on, although it sounds a bit irresponsible, although it sounds a bit rude, but you can use this diagram to gore your answer here. Because all these things is just that you look at the story, you write a narrative writing, you just tell a story from the picture. You got the idea? It's not very hard. That's why you don't go to memorize this. Because many people told me, Sir, so it's hard. Why? I need to memorize seven steps. Who asked you to memorize seven steps? Don't do that. You memorize picture. You know what I mean? Memorize picture. It will be easier for you. Alright? So I think that's all for today. Get it? Alright, in next lesson, in next lesson, which is on the next coming Tuesday, we will actually cover the second and the third method. Is it okay? Alright? So I hope all is fine. 
Go back, try some exercises on this double decomposition. If you're having any problem, just ask me in the next lesson. Okay? All good? Alright.